Hey there everyone, Hitesh here back again with another video. This video is a Q&A video. In case you don't know, every single month we do a Q&A video where you ask your awesome questions and I try to answer them. This month also I posted an image on my Facebook page that here is your Q&A image for this month. And surprisingly this month I received more than 100 questions below that image. These Q&A are my favorite part of the series on the YouTube because you guys ask amazing questions and I really want to give them the thorough answer to them. Now that's why I have picked up only selected few of them but also I'm planning to make a part 2 of this video since the questions are so huge in number. So let's get started for the January Q&A. I was kidding myself, now I know you don't love me, even though you said you'd never leave me now just like always the questions are fantastic it was really tough for me to pick up these questions only selected few of them and try to answer them and that's why i'm picking up a few in this video and few in the next upcoming video so let's uh, let's start with an amazing question that says elon musk or mark zuckerberg who is right about artificial intelligence now the people we are talking about are huge figures they are not like any random people or any random youtuber on which i can talk about they are really giant pioneers in their industry and i have seen that debate that they both are having different perspective about machine learning and artificial intelligence and yes elon musk is trying to be a little bit arrogant there and that's not the point here the point here here is that both are pioneers and both are really a great people to talk about anyone who knows about machine learning and artificial intelligence and other don't both of them knows it really well now the only only thing that i have my perspective on this is that on the one hand we have got musk who is a really great pioneer great visionary but is only able to produce tesla and all his projects are like fantasy so far like moon landing and uh, these uh, roof tiles of solar system all of these and the goal of the technology is somehow to make sure that this technology whatever you are creating or designing should reach to the mass audience and so far we have seen that zuckerberg was able to do this whether it's an oculus or facebook he somehow knows that if i'll do something i know how it should reach to the mass audience so it's not the point that who is right or wrong it's the point who is able to do these machine learning and ai uh, make sure that it reaches to the mass audience and so far I think that Zuckerberg is winning the game so far the next question is interesting and I like it really a lot sir how programming languages are created can you create your own programming language if yes how if not why or how to make your own compiler now let me tell you this thing when you do your masters in computer science or any related field there is a subject in your stream which known as modern compiler design and this is the exact way how you design your own programming language and in fact all the people who have successfully completed their masters this is a semester where this is a subject where you have to read in either one of the semester or either whatever the course there is but the point is this modern compiler design there is an awesome book as well i'll link that in the description section which i read during my masters it's a good book and in that practical session you also learn how these modern compilers are designed uh, what is these uh, grammars that you write for your language and of course in a short practical everyone does a small practical where somehow we write our own syntax for language i called my language during practical as a hitesh language it's not a really good name for a language and people liked it actually my batchmates it was like uh, i called it as h language and it was nothing but the language it was just somehow you are able to assign a variable put it into memory and print it out back that's it because designing a language really takes a lot of time, effort, thinking, rigorous testing and a lot of teamwork as well. So yes, it's completely possible to design your own language using modern compiler design and a couple of other subjects that you have to study. It's completely possible. If you wish, just go ahead and design your awesome language. This next question is also really interesting. It says, many things cooking up for future like IoT, AI, green transportation and blockchain. So according to you, how future looks like? In a one word, if I had to say, I would say future is going to be amazing and more centric towards computers and mobile phone. I was really lucky enough to see this entire evolution. I saw how people just opposed the computers at first. There were rallies in India that computers are bad and all these things. Then I saw the evolution of mobile phone right from the very first mobile phone which came in India. 
and then to the evolution where we are seeing the iPhone 10 and all these Samsung devices so I think it's really going towards computers programming mobile phones and all these things but as far as future is concerned there are always going to be a lot of theories and research which are far more hard to implement as far as they look really good in the fantasies for example the self-driving car this looks so amazing so good there are good side of it there are bad side of it and in theories these all looks really good but actual implementation is far more tough also this blockchain uh, technology is really booming nowadays machine learning is also booming machine learning was there already previously it was known as data mining now it has got a fancy term known as machine learning which is helping it in gaining a lot of popularity but the point here is that yes future is looking really promising and i think that people who know right now how to code are going to be really taking the advantage of the future whether you are a painter or maybe you are a shopping expert or whatever you are a few basic knowledge about programming is surely going to help you in future and at least i'm a big fan of programming so what you can expect me is saying that yes i can see a bright future about programming regardless of what people say and what the artificial intelligence is shaping up machine learning the one thing is really sure that programmers are going to have bright future and I'm really proud that I'm one of them. The next question is also interesting. I think I have answered it previously as well, but let me try that again. What do you think about Sophia AI? Now, Sophia AI is something that I have been following for a really long time and before even they have applied uh, to this uh, Saudi Arabia citizenship, I was following this project even before that. And I'm really happy that somebody has got open-minded and allowed a citizenship for that. I even followed Sophia when Sophia came to IIT Bombay. I had a known professor there. I wanted to go there, but due to some uh, client issues and work, I couldn't travel there. But I asked my uh, that professor friend that, hey, can you please go on to Skype? I really want to see live how Sophia is interacting, all of that. I'm really optimistic about how things are facing and even we have got a robot uh, that can understand our context. That's really fascinating for me. And all those people who are worried about Terminator kind of issue, come on, that was just a movie. A lot of things happens in the movie. In case you are following the news right now, a lot is happening over the movies. But regardless of that, it's a really leap forward where we are going in the future. And if we'll be afraid of the future, we cannot achieve that. So I'm always optimistic about this. I have a very, very high hope for Sophia to be turned up really good. In the future, I would also like to see some athletes as well as robots. Like I would love to see somebody, some robot that can actually looks like a human and is able to compete a race according to human limits as well and swimming and all these things. Uh, just like right now in the colleges, we do have robo war competition. I would love to see all of the robotic competition, robo swimming, uh, robo running and all these things. I think that would be fantastic and I would be really like to part of that. It's amazing to see all these things. A question about freelancing. Let's pick this up. How to get clients in freelancing website and one thing, how to know the trending topic in order to make a video on that topic on YouTube. Let me answer that one by one. First and foremost, I think the two things that you should always keep in mind while bidding is uh, make sure you have a portfolio after that you bid up and make sure you understand two things about the client. First, the client is not full so that you can just present him any pre-written context or pre-written template and can just give him in the bid. Don't do that. And second is make sure you understand the client as well. It is really the important part. What you're giving to the client is not about just a website. It should be whole experience and this will allow you to interact with the client and get more projects. So again, look for the client, understand what are his need and according to that only give him his demos of these projects that you have built in the past or you have worked on your own. At the initial stage, bidding and getting freelancer project is tough. I do agree on that, but it's not that tough. Obviously, at the initial stage, you have to reduce down your prices. You cannot charge $500 for making a website at initial stage. You have to reduce down your price quite a lot. But once you have got projects, you have got a reputation, you have got few stars from the clients, obviously you can charge up later on quite a bit. So always just remember, client is not a fool and try to understand the client as much as possible. Give him just don't don't just give him a project give him a whole experience so that he can become your fan a really cool question and i think it will help you to understand my perspective as well is it better to learn complete front-end development before python now let me point out straightforwardly here that 
Python has nothing to do with front-end development. Of course, we are not talking about Django or Flask. But what I think about it is everyone, everyone, everyone should know how these front-end technologies work, especially HTML and CSS at least. Whether you are a pen tester, you are a network admin, or you want to go into Linux, Linux, whatever you call that, or maybe you want to go into mobile app development, Python, machine learning, data science, whatever that is, HTML and CSS, this is how the entire web is being made. And at least if you want to call yourself programmer, at least have a basic knowledge of how HTML and CSS work. This is like basic and I always recommend these skills of front-end development are always going to be helpful whether you are going into machine learning, data science. These are the basic foundation and structure of the entire web. So an extra skill is never going to harm you. Always and always take some time and at least learn HTML and CSS. Or if you want to go into complete front-end developer, here's the link. Also link is the description. Check out this course. Next, let's pick up a question about my experience. It says, have you ever outsourced any project? If so, then how was your experience and what are the do's and don'ts of outsourcing? Yes, I have outsourced quite a lot of projects. Sometimes it gets really busy up. So I found out some of the outsourcing people and outsourced them my projects. Uh, it was a mixed experience. Uh, sometimes you get good people who are actually working on your project and sometimes you get the people who don't really understand your project at all and just throws up random words and give you random things. I really absolutely hate them. These are the people who are just running a senseless companies on the freelancing websites. I absolutely hate them. But again, there are good companies as well who likes to understand your project and deliver you accordingly. But I really sometimes uh, see that there are companies who just works on WordPress and just gives you a project being designed on WordPress, whether that's a requirement or not. And sometimes you just say that, hey, I want a guy who can work on React, that's it. And these companies who work on WordPress and all these things try to bid on those projects. I don't know what is happening there. But again, it's not always about bad experience. I have some found good, amazing writers, good, amazing designers who have not only uh, completed my project, I have asked them to teach me something about designing and all these things and they happily took a charge and taught me a couple of good tricks as well. So always sometimes there are amazing experience on freelancing. World is all like that. There are good people and there are bad people. So it's a kind of a mixed experience. A question where I'm gonna bash down a lot of universities. So the question says degree or project portfolio which is more important in programming job? Okay, let's just be honest here that degrees are also important, but not that much important. We all can say this really honestly, if you just ask me, I'll just say that university syllabus is completely outdated. And this is not kind of a fact that I'm telling you already knew this. And all the people who are teaching at universities, all the higher management of universities, they also know that we are nowhere near where actually the technology and the industry is going towards. So obviously degree alone can never, never get you a decent good job. Probably you can get a job where you'll be sitting on a bench or maybe working on a company which, uh, in which the work can be done by a student who is just 10th or maybe 12th standard and you are just working in such a company. I don't think that's a fruitful thing. So yes, my honest opinion is if you're just relying that I have done a degree, I'll get a job you are in such a dilemma that is completely wrong. Get out of that myth. With, just with the degree, you obviously won't be getting a good decent job where you can get progress. You have to work it on your own. You have to learn it on your own, whether that's a Python, machine learning, maybe Android, maybe iOS, wherever, whatever the things are, networking, pen testing, wherever you want to go, you have to learn it on your own at your own free time, whether that's night, day, However the struggle is, you have to learn it on your own. The reason why a lot of universities are staying behind the industry standards is because there is a lot of paperwork and a lot of process in order to update any syllabus or curriculum. The, the moment they will start to update their curriculum for iOS 10, probably it will be iOS 15, which would be in the market. And obviously, again, they will be really out of the standards. Woo, this is getting really long, but the questions are actually really interesting and I like to answer them. A question about personal life and it says, do you have girlfriend? Uh, because many programmers don't have girlfriend, they only love computer-ish thing only. Also tell us why you always pronounce word with ish, tell us story behind that. 
If you are good in time management, you can be multitasking and that's only statement I'm gonna make for question number one. About the my adding of the ish thing, it's all about one of the Singapore company I was leading through and those people were good in programming, not so good and also they were not good in English. So I was really having a hard time in making sure that they do understand what they have done is correct but not 100% correct and it was really a tough time to make sure that they understand this once i added that this is correct ish but not completely correct they just clicked with me and they understood that it's not a perfect thing and we are not doing we are doing something wrong so that made me realize that when things are not 100 percent you can just say it's ish like it's almost there but it's not there and people just understood it nicely so i got this habit from there and i didn't look back after that i i'm still like this Another cool question. Sir, your favorite fictional character who really motivates you in life? And with a, without even a blink, I can say Tony Stark. Hardworking, talented, good amount of resources, good money, and don't give up about what people say in life, just try to do what he likes to do. And that's what keeps me motivating, that no matter what the world says about you, just keep on doing your job and do it always perfectly and in style. Also, onto a side note, I'm talking about the Tony Stark of the movies because in the fictional character or in the cartoon series or in the comic series, it was mentioned clearly that Tony Stark got mutated and that's why he's super intelligent. So we are not talking about that. We are talking about the movie one. Okay, this is really a cool question and I like it. And you know what? I have been saying quite a lot. Cool question. So let's just skip that. When did you realize that you have achieved something in life? I am really happy with what I have achieved so far in life. But of course, this is not uh, which I can only do. I can go really far beyond. I came from a place where I had to drop out for three months from the school because uh, I didn't have enough money to pay for my school fees and it was a forceful dropout. I absolutely hated it and now I have come to a place where I have achieved really good things in education. I have got my own Harley Davidson. I have traveled all across the world. Uh, the office that you see right now is my own office. It's not rented. I have purchased it with my own money. So I think I have come really far and a lot of these like buying Harley Davidson, buying your own office, these are all point where I have realized that I have achieved really good. Uh, also recently I got registered, my company got registered in the United States, that was a big one. But out of all these which has given me a lot of like inner peace is something being on YouTube. The community love that I have found is like far beyond on getting your first Harley Davidson or maybe getting your first office or all these things are far less as compared to what I have seen on YouTube. I go on to restaurants and people just know me and like to say hello to me and uh, I get all these beautiful comments in the comment section. I receive tons of messages that hey we are just being motivated. We are learning something because of you maybe not on your platform but still we are learning something just because of you. We got started in programming. This is, I think, the most best thing and the beautiful thing that has ever happened to me. This recognition on the YouTube, this love towards the channel. I don't really care whether YouTube stops monetizing my videos or anything. Uh, YouTube can never stop something which is the love I'm getting from the people. And I think this is all why, because this is all why I do everything on YouTube. So I think this is my biggest achievement in getting stay in touch with all of you people. I think this is kind of an extraordinary feeling. I, I absolutely love this. Next question. How regular your haircut is? Just wanted to know. Okay, come on. I, this is going too far. Probably we are not going to answer this. But wait for part two. Now you're gone.